Come to Calvary's holy mountain, sinners ruined by the fall. Here a pure and healing fountain flows for you, for me, for all. In a pure potential tried, opened when our Savior died. Come in poverty and meanness, come defiled without within. From infection and uncleanness, from the leprosy of sin, wash your robes and make them white. Ye shall walk with God in light. Come in sorrow and contrition, wounded, paralyzed, and blind. Hear the guilty, free remission, here the troubled peace may find. Health this fountain will restore, they that drink shall thirst no more. They that drink shall live forever, tis a soul renewing flood. God is faithful, God will never break his covenant of blood. Signed when our Redeemer died, sealed when he was glorified. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray that as Jesus manifested his love in service to all, we too might serve our neighbors in their time of need. Holy God, source of all love, on the night of his betrayal, Jesus gave his disciples a new commandment to love one another as he had loved them. By your Holy Spirit, write this commandment in our hearts through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Exodus, the 12th chapter. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall mark for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. Tell the whole congregation of Israel that on the 10th of this month, they are to take a lamb for each family, a lamb for each household. If a household is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join its closest neighbor in obtaining one. The lamb shall be divided in proportion to the number of people who eat of it. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a year old male. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats. You shall keep it until the 14th day of this month. Then the whole assembled congregation of Israel shall slaughter it at twilight. They shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and the lintel of the houses in which they eat it. They shall eat the lamb that same night. They shall eat it roasted over the fire with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. Do not eat any of it raw or boiled in water, but roast it over the fire with its head, legs, and inner organs. 
You shall let none of it remain until the morning. Anything that remains until the morning, you shall burn. This is how you shall eat it. Your loins girded, your sandals on your feet, your staff in your hand, and you shall eat it hurriedly. It is the Passover of the Lord. For I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike down every firstborn in the land of Egypt, both of human beings and animals. On all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you live. When I see the blood, I will pass over you, and no plague shall destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be a day of remembrance for you. You shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord. Throughout your generations, you shall observe it as a perpetual ordinance. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The cup of blessing that we bless, it is a sharing in the blood of Christ. The cup of blessing that we bless, it is a sharing in the blood of Christ. I love the Lord, for he has heard the cry of my appeal. For he turned his ear toward me and answered me quickly when I called him. The cup of blessing that we bless, it is a sharing in the blood of Christ. How can I repay the Lord for his goodness to me? The cup of salvation I will raise. I will call on the Lord's name. My vows to the Lord I will fulfill before all his people. O oh, precious in the eyes of the Lord is the death of his faithful. The cup of blessing that we bless is a sharing in the blood of Christ. Your servant, Lord, your servant am I. You have loosened my bonds. A thanksgiving sacrifice I make. I will call on the Lord's name. My vows to the Lord I will fulfill before all his people. In the courts of the house of the Lord, in your midst, O Jerusalem. The cup of blessing that we bless is a sharing in the blood of Christ. A reading from 1 Corinthians, the 11th chapter. For I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I give you a new commandment that you love one another. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory to you, O Lord. Now, before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that the hour had come to depart from this world and to go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. 
The devil had already put it in the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hand, and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, You do not now know what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, One who is bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason, he said, not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, had put on his robe and had returned to the table, he said to them, Do you know what I have done for you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you also should do as I have done to you. Very truly I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, blessed are you if you do them. Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself, and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. King of King, yet born of Mary, 
as of old on earth he stood. Lord of Lord, in human last joy, in the body and the blood, he will give to all the faithful his own self for heaven. Rank on rank, yet host of heaven spreads its vanguard on the way. As the light of light descended from the realms of endless day, comes the powers of hell to vanquish. As the darkness clears In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I give you a new commandment that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you love one another. This day, Holy Thursday, is also known as Maundy Thursday, rooted in that Latin word mandatum, that means command, order. It's as if it were that of a commanding officer to the troops under his control. Jesus Christ, our commander-in-chief, leaves us a command. Love one another. He called it a new command, but that command is as old as the revelation of Scripture. The love of God embodied in the first three commandments of the ten. The love of our neighbor embodied as they are in commandments four through ten. Love is the essence of the ten commandments. With them all 613 of the mishvot, the traditional numeration of the commands of the Hebrew scriptures, all of them boil down to this command of love. So how can Jesus call it a new commandment? It's as old as time. I will be your God, you will be my people. A commandment of mutual love and adoration. I give you a new commandment that you love one another just as I have loved you. You also should love one another. Apart from Jesus Christ, love is a transient thing. It is a fleeting emotion being twitterpated in the words of an old Disney film caught up in the romance of the moment. Or it may be a slightly more mature, I love you for what you do for me, for how you make me feel. But life, the reality of human life, shows us how transient that can be. Because for all that you make me happy, for all that I love your sense of humor, there will be days when you irritate me and annoy me, when the stupid little things like how you load the dishwasher the wrong way instead of the right way drive me crazy, that if that's all that love is, then it is an old thing. It's a passing thing. But Jesus gives us a new command to love one another, but not just to love one another with the passing of human fancy, 
with romance and roses and valentines to love one another just as I have loved you. That's what makes this day Maundy Thursday. It's not just one more command to add to the list of so many of the demands of the law and the prophets from the scriptures of of old. It's a new perspective on those commandments. And it is on this night, on this night that Jesus transforms the reality of those old commandments. Because love demands service. And on this night, the one who is owed our love chooses instead to act in love. Jesus wrapped a towel around himself, filled a basin with water, and taking on the role of a servant of the household, began to wash the disciples' feet. Jesus did not demand love, but acted in love. He came to Simon Peter, began to attempt to wash his feet, and Peter protested, much as happens in every congregation where some idealistic new pastor attempts to introduce the foot washing on Holy Thursday, and nobody quite wants to take their shoes and socks off. It's a bit too embarrassing. Lord, you are not going to wash my feet, are you? But Peter says, Jesus says, Unless I wash you, you will have no share in me. Could Peter have possibly understood on that night the full depth of what Jesus was saying? Surely not. To him, it was simply the embarrassing act of taking his shoes and socks off in front of his teacher and having to sit there and squirm while he was being washed. But Jesus would soon know what he needed to be cleansed of. And it was not the dust and the dirt of the streets of Jerusalem. It was sin and death and the power of the devil. It was his own denial that Jesus would need to cleanse him of. Him of. And that day would come soon enough. Jesus would, with a look, call Peter back to repentance, and his tears would become that day the baptism with which he was baptized. There, Jesus would indeed cleanse him, not feet only, hands, head, and heart, the whole of the human person, in that act of repentance, baptized in that moment, he would be set free. You and I are like that. We know that we need our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, yet too often we are hesitant to come before him in our brokenness, to make ourselves vulnerable to his gaze, but his love is an amazing love. What wondrous love is this, O oh my soul, that Jesus Christ should stoop to take on the task of a servant, a slave, and to wash our feet. You and I have received that incredible love of God in Jesus Christ in the waters of baptism baptized in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, we have been joined to the love of God manifest in Jesus Christ. It is a love that would be further manifest later in this week, in the garden at his betrayal, before the Sanhedrin in their trial, 
before Pontius Pilate, who questions what is truth, even as truth itself stood in front of him, the one who would climb the cross, not as a passive victim of injustice, political or social, but as the high priest offering the sacrifice by which we are made whole. It is in the shedding of his blood, sprinkled not only before the Ark of the Covenant as in the days of old, but on the people also in the days of old, binding together that which is offered to God and that which is given as gift to the people. It would be the blood of Jesus Christ that would be love not spoken, not felt as an emotion, but enacted, incarnate, if you will, in the body and the blood of the one who is incarnate, of the Virgin Mary, who for us and for our salvation was made man. It is the body and blood of Jesus, which is love in solid form. God is love, St. John would tell us later in his epistles, and that love came into this world not as a feeling, not as a sentiment, or even as a command, but as a gift in the body and the blood of Jesus Christ. And so, Having given his disciples this new command to love one another, Jesus demonstrates what that love is. For on the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup. Again, he gave you thanks and gave it to his disciples and said, This is my cup of the new covenant, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. That is our new command. Not to strain and to strive to keep all 613 of those Torah mitzvot and commands not even to imagine that somehow by our resolutions and efforts we can keep the Ten Commandments, but instead to receive, teach, celebrate, and share Christ Jesus, who is God's love, who is the one we are commanded to receive and then to share. It is Monday, Thursday, and we enter now into three holy days that are our Passover. Not a lamb as of old in our first lesson, but the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Lord, have mercy. The one whose blood marks our doorposts so that the angel of death passes over. This is our paschal sacrifice. We are led through the Red Sea waters of baptism on a lifelong journey through the desert of this world towards a promised land, the land for which Jesus had proclaimed for three years in his ministry, speaking as he did of the kingdom of God which is at hand. This is love, the love he lavished upon us, the love that we receive in empty and open hands every time we receive the Eucharist, the love for which we give thanks as we turn to God in prayer in response to the gift of his word. We have received love. We are filled with love through his gifts. We are called to go in peace and serve the Lord in love, love for God that overflows to a love that serves our neighbors. 
so that setting pride aside, we take off our robes, wrap ourselves in the lowly towels of service, and yes, even wash the feet of others. Because if God was so gracious as to love us enough to wash us, how can we not reach out in love and compassion to others. And when we do, people of God, far more than some clever evangelism program, far more than a marketing strategy online or in the newspaper, by this, everyone will know that you are his disciples if you have love for one another to the one who is love, Jesus Christ our Lord, with his Father and the Holy Spirit, be glory and honor now and forever. Amen. Living together in love and in hope, we confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. At the Last Supper, on the night he was betrayed, our Savior entrusted to his church the memorial of his death and resurrection to be celebrated forever. Let us adore him and say, Sanctify your people redeemed by your blood. Redeemer of the world, give us a greater share of your passion through a deeper spirit of repentance so that we may share the glory of your resurrection. May your mother, comfort of the afflicted, inspire us. May we console others as you console us. In their trials, enable your faithful people to share in your passion and so reveal in their lives your saving power. You humbled yourself by being obedient even to accepting death, death on a cross. Give all who serve you the gifts of obedience and patient endurance. Transform the bodies of those who have died in faith to be like your own in glory and bring us at last into their fellowship. Lord God, in a wonderful sacrament, you've left us a memorial of your suffering and death. May the sacrament of your body and blood so work in us that the way we live will proclaim the redemption you have brought. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, the word that your Son brought us sustains our life on earth. Grant that our longing for it may be fully satisfied in the kingdom of heaven. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God bless us, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. When you woke that Thursday morning, Savior, teacher, faithful friend, thoughts of self and safety scorning, knowing how that day would end. Lamb of God, foretold for ages, now at last the hour has come, when but one could pay sin's wages, you assumed that dreadful sum. Never so alone and lonely, longing with tormented heart to be with your dear and only for a quiet hour apart. Sinless lamb and fallen creature, one last paschal meal to eat, one last lesson as their teacher, washing your disciples' feet. What was there that you could give them that would never be outspent? What great gift that would outlive them? What last will and testament? Show me and the world you love me. Know me as the Lamb of God. Do this in remembrance of me. Eat this body, drink this blood. One in faith, in love united, one all body, you the head. When we meet by you invited, you are with us as you said. One with you and one another in a unity sublime. See in us your sister brother, one in every place and time. One day all the church will capture that bright vision glorious, and your saints will know the rapture that your heart desired for us. When the longed for peace and union of the greatest and the least meet in joyous, blessed communion in your never-ending feast.